Hello and welcome back to Oliver Clapworthy Music and in today's video there's another long form interview with Fraser who's lead vocalist of obvious reasons and runs obvious events who were event promotions in Exeter. So I'm going to have a little chat to him about uh, just the events company and obviously the band as well and we'll see how it goes. So I'm now joined by Fraser who is lead vocalist of obvious reasons and rhythm guitarist. Yep, that's right. And he's also obvious events manager slash organizer slash promoter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Lot, something like that. A lot of things. Or like yeah, the, the founder of obvious events. I, I'm keeping myself busy, yeah. Yeah. I just want to know how how do you manage it all? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I I do a lot of things to be honest. I'm spinning a lot of plates. Um, I found recently that uh, like, sort of the course that I'm on is you used to do the courses. That, um, I'm on the UAL performance course, and um, it's kind of split up into like term by term chunks. And I'm getting to the end of my term two coursework now, and all of these deadlines coming up with like all the gigs I'm doing and just all of the stuff combined has been like a lot of things and uh yeah I, I had to step back for a bit so I, at the moment I'm sort of I'm not doing as much obvious event stuff as I used to be doing it was really full on um just whilst I've got coursework so yeah to, to answer your question shorthand I don't I don't <laughs> I don't manage all of those things um yeah I'm getting better at it I mean I guess you've got um FMP stuff coming up very soon haven't you yeah, FMP is like next, like pretty uh, all of the term two coursework deadlines were yesterday. I mean, uh, but basically, FMP fundamental project is yeah starting on Monday in theory. So, got to start thinking about proposals and all that stuff. Oh, the year one proposal is nothing. <laughs> yeah, I I hear this. I hear this from from year two people that they're like, it's it's piss easy. Just it you is. know, yeah. So I think it should be fine. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, firstly, we're going to do this in like the two parts of first part of, is about the band, second part about obvious events. So sure, yeah, okay. I want to know how, because like my viewers primarily based at Bin Bristol, they probably like to know how you formed. Oh, obvious reasons? Yes. Yeah, okay. Starting with the band. Um, so we all just, well, so when we first started the band, we were a four-piece, but a slightly different four-piece to what we are now. So we were, um, instead of having Rob, who's our lead guitarist, we had um, Annabelle, who played keys. Um, and we all met the four of us on our in our A-level class. So before I moved to the UAL course, I did A-levels. And we did, um, on our in our music A-level class, we all met. And one day we had a cover teacher who he was Sam Tame and Sam Tame was like I don't know what you do on the A-level course I don't know just go and sit around in some bands I guess and do some stuff like he's just so used to teaching UAL so he um stuck us into bands and we I uh, maybe was like oh I'm practicing one of my solo performances I'm doing Are You Mine by the Arctic Monkeys if anyone knows how to play it they could come and jam it with me and I was like oh, I can do that and then Yuri said the same and the three of us went in and Annabelle joined and she was like I think I probably know that song um and then yeah, we made our own little. Uh, I mean, how do how do you not know that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we um we I think we did uh, we ended up covering, managing to get like two good covers of uh of an Arctic Monkeys song and then uh, an Amy Winehouse song in like half an hour, and then we performed them to the class. So we did like two good covers under our belt in like seconds, and we were like, ah, oh, this is probably a sign that maybe we should keep operating as a band and doing stuff. The the name came from a joke in class, where we were um, sitting around and I someone was I was about to make a particularly dirty joke, <laughs> and I was I was like oh I can't make that joke for like obvious reasons and I jested at, at David, and um, our teacher David and M Millie was like go on Fraser what are the obvious reasons tell us Fraser and I was like no obvious reasons is a great band name like just trying to change the subject and then we were like oh actually that like, you know kind of cool and it, it stuck. I mean, all I had to do was, I was listening, I must have been, I was listening to the EP just before this interview, and mm -hmm. um, I just typed in, 
O B V I O, and it came up. But I don't know whether oh, yeah. that's because of like recent searches, like recommending. It, it might be yeah, yeah algorithm stuff, but that is still cool to hear that it's like you know, it's starting to come up in people's like recent searches algorithms feeding them obvious reasons is very cool. Yeah, I want to ask, what's your favorite song to perform as part of obvious reasons, like that you've done in the set before? That's so hard. And so, and this answer is not a universal band answer. Like, I think everybody in the band has a different favorite. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know, though. We've just written a song recently called Cyanide. And it's, I, I, don't, I don't think you would have seen it performed. Did you come to the EP release gig? Yes, I did. I was there. Yeah, so what, one of the last songs was Cyanide. Um, really heavy, riffy. Do, 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 do. Um, it's really fun to do. We love that song. Um, that might be my favorite at the moment, and I think it it might be the rest of the band's favorite. Millie's written herself a like a quite a complicated drum part, so it's taken her a bit of time to sort of get that under her belt. So we performed it at the EP release, and we haven't done it since. But I think we're um we're we're doing a gig. Not uh obviously not this Saturday. Today we're doing uh, next Saturday. I think we're going to try and get that song back on the stage. But that's my favorite. And what about your least favourite? I don't know. There aren't really any songs that I dislike doing. There are songs that I, yeah, I guess least favourite is the best way of phrasing it. I'm not, we do a cover of um, Holiday by Green Day. Do you? And like, I love, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we I, we lo I love that song. It's good fun, but... Um, I don't know. It's just not my favorite to do with the band. Mm. We we tend to only do it at like pubs because, yeah. you know, we when we're playing like venues and stuff, which is I think the only place where you've really seen us as venues, um, we tend to try and do as many originals as possible because people have paid for a ticket to see you play your original songs. But well, yeah, when we go to pubs, we do some originals, but we do a lot of covers as well that people are going to enjoy more. Holiday is one of those songs. I'm going to spin this back around to me and say my favourite two Obvious reason songs. I think probably one has got to be Beta Blockers. Yeah. And then probably that cover of The Chain you did at Move. Oh, th that cover of The Chain is, yeah, I think that might be Millie's favourite. I, oh, I love doing it so much as well. Millie wrote the, the vocal harmonies we do in that, and it's so much fun. I love doing The Chain. Yeah, and probably the um, impromptu cover of Are You Mine was really good as well. Oh, yeah. Are You Mine is always like, every time we do it, we're like, should we just stick Are You Mine on the end? Because we've got time. <laughs> and then <laughs> it always goes wrong because we haven't rehearsed it in a couple of weeks. And then I always miss a bit or, you know, I fall over, something like that. So I wanted to ask you now, like, was there ever a moment where you were like, I want to perform, I want to do this, like, as a living, I want to perform in front of people. That is actually, that's a, a good question with a great answer. The answer to that question is, um, it was the gig, we think, we think we talked about this in our messages at some point recently, but the gig at the Phoenix that Die Twice did with the Iguanas and Seneca, and I think they were called Idol Giants as the other yeah. band. Um that that gig was we were already kind of a band we'd already been a band by that point for maybe two three or four months we'd already done two gigs i think rob had just joined the band or we'd just done our first gig with rob and um the sort of the summer was coming up and we were booking some slightly bigger things than what we had already done and i was loving doing it but i was sort of expecting it to be like something i do at college and then it would you know it would I would find a career, a job, you know. <laughs> um, and I went to that gig and I saw Die Twice play and I saw it was it was really it was um it was the iguanas and it was um Die Twice that really were like massive, huge inspiration for me to get on the stage. And then at our first gig at Move, um the the Sephiros came, the guys from um uh from the Iguanas, and they I just told Ollie then I was like, dude just such a huge inspiration like the reason I wanted to get on stage and I wanted to go into these venues and like not just doing pubs and um and then someone took a picture of us like I'll see if I can find it 
whilst um like right after i told him that and we were both like it, he had a, a shirt on it that said blast beats and we were both like beaming um but it was yeah one of my i favorite. think i remember him wearing that shirt that night i was like that yeah. text fun <laughs> here we go here's the yeah here's the picture is the two of us together if i lower my brightness you'll see it better but yeah on that that first move gig ollie came and i was like super honored that he showed up and i told him yeah how much his performance meant to me so that's yeah that was my biggest inspiration i think was seeing them play it was my first proper like local gig and uh, yeah i was like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life yeah i, I, love grassroots I, music. I wasn't at that die twice gig i was in america yeah, you were on a flight, right? Yeah, I was on a flight, came back 12 hours later, had a day at college, then the day after, invited you down to the TV studio to record Love and My Oh, Alibi. yeah. I've, I've forgot that all of that stuff was happening around then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was fun, though. I remember that. It was good fun. It was like, at that time, it was like, I've no idea. I've not listened to this band. I only know Fraser and Yuri. Mm. I have no idea what's about to happen. And then... So that went out, got tons of views, like 200 views. Two months later, Respect Festival. Oh, Respect Festival was a, was a big deal for us. That was a really big deal for us. And you get on the stage and was like, this is a completely different band to who I witnessed two months before. I think when you, when you witnessed us two months before, we didn't have Rob. Rob made such a, yeah. he makes such a massive difference to obvious reasons. And I think since... Um, we kind of, we, when Annabelle was in the band, we were writing a lot of stuff and Annabelle is, she's so busy. She's so unbelievably busy. She does so much stuff. She was sort of coming to band practice and she was like really tired or she was missing band practice sessions. And so when we were writing songs, we were having to spend extra time like catching Annabelle up. Um, and then when Annabelle made the decision to leave because she was too busy, we kind of found that our like, our process became much simpler because we were all always going to be there and we were all always going to be invested in the writing process. Um, and so then when we, yeah, I think not long after um, Respect Festival was when, was when Annabelle was like, this is, I think Respect might have even been the last gig she did with us, I think, because she, that was when we she was like, wow, you guys are really serious about this. I thought we'd just do a couple of pub gigs. You know, this is, I want you guys to, do stuff with it that you want to do with it, but I don't want to hold you back. So she moved on. Um, yeah, that was like having Rob and Annabelle leaving with like the combination of those things really like pushed obvious reasons past what I think any of us expected it to ever be. I think it's pushed past what I expected obvious reasons <laughs> to be because that, that move gig was probably one of the, because I went to four gigs in that, like, August, last two weeks of August period. I did Silver Tree Headline, 17th of August. Uh, yeah. Future Faces gig, which was really good. Uh, mm. The Jackals Headline on the 24th and the Medina Headline. And I think, like, obvious reasons blew me away that night. Because, like, mainly from the energy... Of the crowd. Like... Yeah, that was unbelievable to us. We've we've kind of been like, bit, when you when you finish a gig, people often ask you like, how do you think it went, or how did it feel? And it's like not really up to you because it can feel good to you, but it was it's always really about audience reception. And we've been incredibly lucky to always have a really active, receptive audience. Um, I don't know if that's in part due to the songs we play and write or if it's to do with the way I front man or I, I don't know what it is but we have always just had the most incredible audience if there's anybody who's watching who has been in one of our audiences like thank you so much because like every person in every audience is always giving it a hundred percent for us and that is um you know that's something that you can only wish for when you're a performer um, so yeah, we get really lucky with our performances and that future faces gig was like such a gamble for us because we'd never really played next to before. And then the audience we had was, and we were also last on, I was expecting, you know, normally when you have like move gigs, the, the band at the end has like a much smaller audience because everyone has to leave because they have to get public transport. And we were like so ready for that to happen. 
we were like, our audience is going to be really small. Joyride's going to have a massive audience and then everyone will leave and that'll be fine. And then our audience was amazing and it totally blew us away and it was so exciting. So. I mean, I remember you messaging me saying, I'm not holding hope for like the, yeah. the big audience because everyone will need to get home. But it it was pretty packed that night, especially during Flavor the Wicked. Oh yeah, Flavor the Wicked set that night, I think was the standout. They they are an unbelievable band. Flavor of the Wicked are so good. Um, it's it's a real shame that they haven't been active recently. Um, but they they're coming back. Flavor of the Wicked are, are are on the rise. I've been chatting to them recently, and I think yeah, something soon. Some something something of obvious events. Flavor the Wicked. <laughs> I I won't say. Yeah, I I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. There's a lot of things coming up. And we love flavor, so if there's anything that they want to get involved with, then we we always reach out. Yeah. Would you ever reach out to any bands from like BIM Bristol? Yeah, yeah. There's a few. I just don't know many BIM bands to be honest. I've reached out to Pack a few times. Yeah. Um, Pack. I'm really interested in working with them. They've got a great following, and they're an amazing band, and they've got great energy. Um, I don't really know any other BIM bands. I, went, I guess I don't go to BIM. Went to a gig two nights ago and it was like full of a couple of bin bands and there was a band called who killed bunny um and oh i've actually i've heard of them yeah yeah i've posted them on the, my story a few times and they're like very like might be where i know them from it's like indie indie rock very like it's heavy indie okay but cool it's like very very good and there's also seems, a band. seems synonymous with the obvious reasons vibe yeah and... maybe I'll, maybe i'll get in touch Tough Luck are a like seventies funk classic rock. I think band. I've heard of these guys as well. I'm I've posted them on, on, on my story before. I did a mm. review on them. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna follow them quickly on Instagram. What was the first one called? One's Tough Luck. Yeah, one's Tough Luck, and the other one's called Two Kill Bunny. Is it yeah. tough spelled like T U double F? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know Tough Luck, and then. Who killed the Bunny? Other one, who killed Bunny? Who killed I'll keep Bunny them on my radar. Band. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm always up for working with new bands. Um, I was on the phone with um, with Charlie. The she's one of the singers in. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. She's a singer in Joyride. She's a singer in um Finding Mary as well, which is a bar spa band. And she was basically saying like, um, you know, both Joyride and Finding Mary are. Are gigging and we'd love to get involved in stuff and i was like yeah absolutely and you know any bus bar bands like please just send everyone my way like on honestly send please anybody send me a message on on the obvious events instagram page um i i'm up for working with anybody it's i'm always up for a fun gig yeah and i also um i think i told you i interviewed fran yesterday and yep. mm -hmm. and i mentioned to him like two days ago saying doing an interview with Fraser what question would you like to ask him okay, and great. his question was what inspired you to start up obvious events that's a great question um obvious events started for lots of different reasons the sort of main two were that obvious reasons wanted to start getting gigs in venues and we didn't know anyone who was going to give us those gigs because we just weren't in that crowd. So we were like, we need to make our own, you know, place. So we basically just got in touch with Move and we were like, hey, we'd love to play a gig if you've got anything going. And they offered us a support for a cover band or something. And we were like, yeah, cool. Sounds good. And then as we got more developed as a band and we wrote more original music, we sort of got back in touch and we were like, hey, we actually want to do some like a, a night. We want to book out the space with original bands and you know, make a thing of it. And they were like, okay, cool. That sounds good. We're totally up for that. And we started organizing that and we realized we wanted to make it a, a thing. Um, when we were organizing that gig, I was thought back to, um, this is probably quite niche. The, the, the other part of why we wanted to, um, to do it was cause that we went to a gig or I went to a gig. I think I went with Yuri actually. Yeah, I did. I went with, I went with Yuri and a friend called Alex um, by uh, a records company called Hollow Records, who do some sort of band management stuff. Um, and they had, it was Atlas Azure, Jacob Dursley, another rapper, I can't remember the name of, um, 
Foxhole and Die Twice. It was an amazing lineup. It was a great night. And I loved it. And I was like, I can't wait to come back to another one. And then um, then when I was, you know, I, kept, I started following their page and then nothing came up. And it like left a little hole in my heart. And it's like, I need more like, you know, regular lineups like this with really cool bands on. And, and you know, it, it wasn't happening as regular as I wanted it to. And it wasn't, you know, that process wasn't going like I wanted it to. So I was like, I need to, I need to do what I thought Holly Records was going to do. I need to fill that space that I've noticed in this environment where there's, you know, there could be loads of really cool band showcases like the Hollow Records one. Um, so yeah, Obvious Events was in part just getting our band gigs because no one else was going to do it and you need to get yourself in there somehow. But then also just wanting to fill that space with cool band showcases and give grassroots music opportunities to, you know, like Hollow Records, the Hollow Records gig helped me discover cool bands that I'd never heard of before. I'd never heard of Foxhole. I didn't know that Jacob Desley made music and I went to this gig and I learned about loads of really cool music in my area and I just wanted that opportunity for loads of other young people who were just starting up at college or uni who had no idea of the amazing music scene and could come and learn about it. So I th yeah, I think that's kind of the main reason. Supporting grassroots music because I love it. Filling that hole for band showcases and kind of doing as much as I can to get my band opportunities I think, the... I think my Amazing. next next question would be uh, I'm interviewing Zephyros on Tuesday and drumroll please die twice on Thursday cool um, what questions would you like to ask them both both of them yeah great okay that's tough because I I already mentioned in this interview that I kind of idolized those guys. Um, like going to that gig was a huge deal for me. Um, I guess probably. Hmm. I'd I'd ask um the Sephiros. I'd want to ask about um. Well, so they've got a new member. Okay. They've got a new a new member now. They're a yeah. four piece. They've gone from three to four. I'd want to ask about what um, what kind of new opportunities they foresee the band having now that they're a four piece, because there's so much you can do with another instrument, you know. So I want to ask where they're planning on going with that and what they're planning on doing with it. Yeah. Um, that would be my Sephiro's question. And then Die Twice, I'd probably want to ask about... Um, they went and did um, a recording... Uh, session in a studio in Wales yeah. um, I'd want to ask about what that studio was like and how they ended up getting into that space and you know uh, you know the, the juicy deets the, the goss from <laughs> from their studio session in Wales would be my die twice question these are probably questions I will just ask them all when I see them next because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll bump into them all at some point soon and I'll, I'll get to ask them these questions yeah. in person yeah it's uh... I've already booked my Dire Twice ticket. Yes, so did I. Yeah. I was in class, and it was like final deadlines for term two, and I was like, I really should be working. Just but also, let me get my phone out. And... Just, just refreshing this page, like, <laughs> when can I buy these tickets? Yeah. I wonder who was first buyer then, because I, yeah, I, I was straight on it at 10 a.m. Mm. You, uh, you are, like, probably the most eager ticket buyer I've ever yeah. met anything whenever we like sell a ticket we <laughs> we'll look on fat soma because we sell our tickets for event stuff on fat soma and we'll look and it'll be um like oh who uh <laughs> it'll be like oh we've sold a ticket who's bought it and it's almost always either you or our like lead guitarist dad like those are the first <laughs> tickets that always sell and we've kind of got this like who's gonna get their first oliver clatworthy or <laughs> or uh or rob's dad it'll be one of the two have I ever been first? Can you remember? Oh yeah, multiple times. In fact, I think at the moment we've got a gig coming up. I think you're um still. I think I was first on uh, Foxhole. Yeah, I think you are still the only ticket on Foxhole at the moment. We haven't. <laughs> I haven't put posters Yay. up. I haven't put posters up around town yet. So Yay. as soon as I do that, I think tickets. will If start it's just a on one ticket the... sold, it'd be a private gig for me. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at the moment you are the the singular <laughs> ticket that's been sold for that gig, which is surprising that Andy hasn't bought one yet. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll have to do some more pushing for that gig, mm. promoting. 
I mean, yeah. it's Foxhole, Poppy Show, and Viola Tai, and obvious yeah. reasons. Mm-hmm. It's a good lineup. Yeah. It's a really good lineup. I haven't seen Violet Eye before. I hear they're really good. So, Yuri really likes Violet Eye. So mm. I'm very excited to see them play. By the time this video goes out, the gig will be in two days' time. This oh, video is going exciting. out on the 31st because I've got Frank's okay. interview going out next week as mm-hmm. we're recording this in Sephiro's week after. Okay. Then two weeks. So, so then, yeah. So the, that gig will be will coming up soon. Then yeah. you should all come to our <laughs> come to our gig at the cavern, please. Please and, come see us at the cavern. And the one at Move. Oh yeah, God, the one at Move as well. That was a complete accident. We booked the one at the cavern, and then we were like, oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, we're playing at uh, we're playing at Move like three days after. So we're playing. It's the second of April. We're playing in the cavern with Foxhole and Poppy Show and Violet Eye, and then. Uh, on the 5th of April, on the Friday, we're playing um, with Poppy Show again, but also this time with um, Bears and Monocles and a guy called Hurricane Rodriguez. I have no idea who he is. He does not have an Instagram. So, so, so do Bears with Monocles. They don't have an Instagram. I think they've got Facebooks. Mm. I think this the, the age demographic is going to be slightly scaled for for that gig. We'll see. Maybe the obvious reasons fans will turn up and all the old people will be like, oh, shit, i got to get out of here. And Old people. I say old people. They won't be old. They'll be in their 30s and 40s. Mm. And obviously the Die Twice single release party on the 6th of April. Oh, yeah, of course. That week's going to be busy for us. Um, so if uh, has there ever been any like challenges you had to get past in obvious events? Um... Yeah, there have been some things. It's it's generally like um, just being young, I guess. So like I'm I've just turned eighteen, and when I started obvious events, I was I was just gone seventeen, so it's almost a year ago now. Um, all right, well, just over half a year ago, I think is more accurate. And I was um, yeah, there was a lot of things where it's just kind of you want to book serious gigs with serious bands who are really interested in you know making themselves known in local industry and. And and people don't take that seriously when a 17-year-old sends you an email and is like, hello, my name's Fraser and I'd like you to come play my gig. Um, it's just hard to 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 kind of break that social boundary of like this kid doesn't know what he's doing because he's a kid. Um, I think that's probably been the most challenging thing. Like we've been trying to find an engineer for something recently, just a sound engineer. And like just booking a sound engineer when you're 18 years old is impossible because they're like, I think I'm a bit above your pay grade. And I'm like, no, no, I'm going to pay you. Like this is, (laughs) they think that I'm not going to pay them or, you know, that I'm going to want to pay them really cheap. But, and then the ones who are like, I'll work for you. are like, it's okay. I'll do it for cheap because you're young. And I'm like, I just want (laughs) to... actually run a company that pays people what they are owed and yeah i think that's probably been the most challenging thing is convincing people i'm serious mm. um but it hasn't been that bad it's just sort of the venues as well aren't easy like trying to convince a venue that you're going to put on a legitimate night is has been difficult the cavern have been hard to to work over i love them and they're great they're good people but um yeah they don't i don't think they take us the most seriously it's the same with the Phoenix. The Phoenix have been really hard to get in touch with, but I think that's a universal experience. Apparently, yeah. the Phoenix is just awkward. Yeah, and Move are probably, like, probably maybe one of the best. Oh, Move are incredible. I like. I couldn't overstate that. They are just so in like engaged with the local community and so interested in working. And like, I just I wish that like the that they had a space that was more, you know, like like Move is a, a a brilliant space for bands to go and play shows. It's a great local venue. It's just like kind of far away from the train stations and it's mm. not regarded in the best light. It's had a few, you know, brand changes over the last couple of years and it's just, yeah, they've had to overcome a lot. And I, I wish that the team at Move had a, a space that was more reliable. But they are, they are an amazing team. And I, I've just, um they've just hired me to organize events for them. So I'm oh. I'm part of the move staff now. Is that something is you have cool. to cut out as well? No, that that's okay. I'm okay with that that being in as well. <laughs> yeah, other stuff. 
Um, no, I'm I'm perfectly fine with with that being public knowledge now. There's a few people who know. Um, I'm I'm a very part time worker, but I am, you know, working. I basically I'm organizing their live music events with a guy called Johnny French. So if anybody wants to play a gig at Move, they can message me or the Obvious Events page, and I will speak to the Move team and we'll see what we can get you in on. Yeah. Is there any favourite like standout gigs you've performed in and obviously put on as well? Uh, been to or just performed in and like put on? performed in and like organised. Okay. Um. That standout ones I performed at. We played a festival on the hills. That was um unbelievable. That was over the summer holidays. We played um uh the we were on the same stage we were on first and at the end of the night was scouting for girls which was really surreal to like be on a stage and then to look at that stage later and scouting for girls be on that stage that was a really big moment for us um i think another one that was really significant for us was we played with um the Sephiros and seneca at the the late and great rock bottom bar in plymouth which is now closed down unfortunately but um that was also a really significant gig for us it was the first time that like we had been accepted to do something it was before the future faces so it was you know we were like we were organizing the future faces because we didn't think anyone was going to want us to be involved in their scene and the Sephiros were just incredibly gracious and they gave us this incredible opportunity to play with them and Seneca and yeah it was like you know it wasn't the most glamorous gig in the world but it was like actually playing with these amazing bands who we really really respect um I think that one was yeah a big deal for us in terms of gig like gigs we put on just the first gig at the cavern and the first gig at move are always going to be the future faces and fright fest were just like incredible nights that were far more successful than we could have ever hoped or dreamed for and we were amazed at the turnout and all the people who were there who came out to see us play and to see all the other bands play they, it was just the yeah a real like people are there for grassroots music and it's really cool to see that I wanted to go to the metal night as well. The uh, the metal night was yeah. chaos. Hang on, uh, just give me <laughs> two seconds. He's off. He's out of Where here. What's he? Hell yeah, yeah. Recreants. Yeah, recreants played at that one. Hell yeah! That is a sh uh, it is a cool shirt. Yuri's got one, and yeah. it's a sick shirt. I was uh, first buyer on that one as well. Hmm. I was first buyer on that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Yuri was like, as soon as those shirts come out, I got to get one. And then yeah, Yuri was like in their like swimwear. As soon as they could, they got a shirt, which was really cool. It was a cool shirt. Um, and Recreants are a cool band. We love Recreants. That metal night was a lot of fun. It was a little bit like on the rougher side we had some problems with some of the audience i had to make a statement which was not ideal um just there was some young people in the crowd who um got in some fights and i basically had to be like there's moshing and then there's fighting and you need to be reasonable there were so many other things that went wrong that night that i could just talk for hours and hours, <laughs> hours and hours but we sold tickets and we made a profit and all the bands seemed to have fun and everyone made some money and that's what matters. So, you know, I can't really complain. So, so if you had to now name any five bands slash artists to perform in an obvious event, event, literally any band slash artist, who who would you who would you pick? So I thought about this question because you sent me some of these questions before. I thought about this question a little bit. And it's so tough to say because, like, do you mean? <laughs> Here's, I'm I'm now asking you for the for the specifics of your question. Do you mean play at one event together? Yeah. Or do you, okay? So okay. So that that changes my answer slightly because if it was just like five bands I'd want to work with, that would be different. At one event together, I would probably say, I I'm I'm all about grassroots music. So just anything that's local um, is has to be on there. I would love to get local music on with a bigger band. Um, I saw 
So like I die twice. Yeah. Uh, a no brainer for me. They would have to be on my lineup. Um, probably the Sephiros or the Iguanas, one of the two. I wouldn't do both. I wouldn't put Oli Sephiro through that. Um, or Zach, to be honest, both of them work their asses off in both sets. Um, uh, yeah, so probably those those two would be my, my opening bands. And then I saw recently one of the most uh, incredible shows I've ever seen in my life. I saw Theo Katzman in Bristol, and he was amazing. And he reminded me how amazing fourth peck is about uh, is as a band and how much i love them and i went and listened to so much fourth peck so fourth peck would probably i would love to get them on a lineup um this would be a really interesting variety night to do like the Sephiros and die twice and then like suddenly like funk band um i really love royal blood if i could work with royal blood that would be incredible i don't think it will ever happen but you know i can hope and pray <laughs> um and then I don't know. I like I thought about this a lot. Like a fifth artist. I think I guess if I was going for like a variety night, I'd want to do something with a completely different feel. Like so maybe I'd go for something really poppy or or like really I don't know. Maybe Cave Town. I love Cave Town. Well get obvious reasons on there as a fifth band. <laughs> yeah, get get obvious reasons on there. But then I've got too too much grassroots music. I wanna have an even I guess I've got the three to two. Yeah, that would be fine. Um yeah, I think th those are just some of the bands I love, really, is, uh, is essentially the question you just asked me, Ben. Um, yeah, maybe maybe obvious reasons would get in there. I don't know. If it was for me, then I would, you know, if I was if I wanted to be someone who was watching, then I <laughs> then I wouldn't put obvious reasons in because I don't want to be working when I'm enjoying something. But yeah, I guess I'd be working anyway <laughs> if it's one of my events. Yeah, yeah, maybe I would get obvious reasons in there. I mean, if I were to pick five bands to perform in an obvious event, event, uh, mm. yeah, probably Die Twice. Of course. Flavor the Wicked. Oh, I didn't even think about it, but yeah, uh, they were so good. Probably Pack of Animals. Mm-hmm. And... Tough Luck are a great band. Oh, right. fuck. Okay. I saw them. Uh, I'll keep them in mind. Headline. They headlined Crofter's Rights Room Two, which is oh, yeah. sixty capacity sold out. Um, nice. And That's pretty good. They're like a funk glam classic rock band. Nice. Are they mostly? Um, is it mostly like BIM people who come to those sold out BIM shows? Yeah. But um, mm, okay. right. Uh, there was a fair few BIM people down at Pack of Animals headline in Exeter like when they did yeah, yeah. Phoenix and then my fifth band would probably be hmm, this is difficult it's tough right it's probably tough to... maybe Venus Blue ah oh, that's a shout we love Venus Blue but Venus Blue are, are really hard to because they, they, they've got they're, they're all in so many different places now mm. they're like I, I don't want to to drag them in from all over the country to do gigs you know um when we can get them it's a joy but we were very lucky to have them at our ep release but we're sort of looking for we we, we really love their sort of feel and vibe and we were looking for sort of something that could be similar to that but we wouldn't mean we'd have to drag venus blue to things all the time because we kind of told them when they gigged with us that we would always love to have them on and they were like so we we played with a band recently called Lennon and Zombies, who who are amazing. They're so good, and their EP that just came out is really really good. Um, you should give it a listen. On a I've voice. already it's listened amazing. to it. Oh yeah yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's really good. It's a great EP, but um yeah, they are sort of similar in vibe to to Venus Blue. So when we when we whenever we think now, ah, oh, we should get Venus Blue on for this thing. We're like no. <laughs> we have to get Lennon and the Zombies instead. If we can, we'll get them. So that's kind of our... We don't want to... We, we love them, and whenever they want to do gigs, we'll get them. But it's hard to drag them out to stuff. And finally, what's your future plans in terms of events, bands? What have you got going on? Loads of stuff. Loads and loads of stuff. Most of it I can't talk about. I'll, I'll uh, cut all this part out. You can tell me. I'll keep okay. it a secret. Uh, well, there's there's stuff that I can't even tell you, Oliver. I can't oh. even tell you. 
Um, uh. Yeah, he, he, from now on, is I'll, I'll tell you some things that you might need to cut out. I'll tell you what you can and can't. I'll do stuff you, you can keep in first, yeah. and then I'll be yeah. like, from now on, you've got to cut this. So stuff that's coming up that I can tell you about. Um, obvious reasons are like desperate to get in the studio again. We've got two two or three songs we want to record. Um, we're going to record a sort of singly type thing, release that. And then after that, studio again, another EP. That's our sort of plan at the moment for what we've got coming up for the future as a band. And then just gigging, more and more gigs, hoping to get some festivals going. You know, we'd love to play something like just anything really, even if it's not a massive festival like Boardmasters is, you know, in our heads, that's like the biggest thing we could do right now. And it's like not a huge festival. Um, it is a massive festival, but we would love to do Boardmasters. That'd be really cool. Um, they are definitely already <laughs> planned for this year, though, because they've got Die Twice on their book. Anyway, um, yeah, we'd love to do some festivals. So that's kind of obvious reason stuff. And then in terms of events, just more band showcases. Um, we worked with a lot of, we've done a couple of like duplicate work with recently. We've worked with the same people a few times. And we would just love anyone to reach out. If anyone wants, who's Exeter-based, who's watching this, wants to do a single release or an EP release, or even they just feel like headlining a gig, like, please get in touch and we will help you get a gig. Um, and, you know, we will pay you and you will, you know, it will be fun. You will make money. Um, we are in touch with loads of cool venues. We could try and get you in Move or the Cavern or there's plenty of other places that are, are super up for doing gigging in Exeter. So please get in touch with us. But... Yeah, so just more band showcases. We've got our Bristol show coming up on the 24th of March, which I think will probably have already happened by the time this comes yep. out. Yeah, so that will, we would have just played in Bristol. Um, uh, Joyride have just pulled out of that gig, so Finding Mary are doing that instead now. Yep. Um, so that, that gig's coming up. And then we've got the 2nd of April, which is soon in the cavern in Exeter. Please come see us in Foxhole and Poppy Show and Violet Eye. It's going to be a great night. I think it's I, when I sent the description of the, the evening to the cavern, um, I was like, this is going to be like nonstop bangers because those bands are just like, like full on nonstop banger bands who will just play like the craziest, epicest tunes over and over and over and over and over. Like it doesn't stop, you know, so that's going to be really fun. And then Bears with Monocles are really good friends with us. They're great. They played Festival on the Hills with us. Please come to that on the 5th of April. That's not us. That's just a band thing. Um, and then I think past that in terms of events, uh, no, Recreants are um, have gotten in touch with us. They're releasing a single. They've asked us to help them organize their single release. That's happening in the cavern. Marin the was telling is... me about this yesterday. Yeah. The lineup's slightly shaky at the moment, yeah. but um, they've got some cool bands in their lineup that look like a lot of fun. And but they're... yeah, there you go. I think that's everything. I think that's everything that's coming up. So if you have enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, listen to obvious reasons, go to the event, and thank you very much for watching.